Good afternoon and today I will be discussing with you about inflammation of the sclera which is one of the coats of the eye. Now episcleritis basically is a benign inflammation of the episcleral tissue and the good thing is it does not cause any permanent structural damage. It is quite common. We very frequently see patients who present to us with uh, congestion in the eye which can be uh, either a diffuse congestion or a nodular congestion, nodular pattern. Nodular pattern means that there is an elevated bulge in the episcleral layer but the good news is that it does not cause any structural damage in any permanent way. It usually disappears with an appropriate treatment which is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs either as topical or as systemic medication. And the other important thing to be remember in episcleritis is it is not associated with systemic disease. Unlike scleritis which has a high percentage of association with systemic disease, episcleritis does not have an association with systemic disease. So, scleritis essentially is a deeper involvement and it can result in visual impairment. It can produce permanent structural changes. It is often associated with very serious systemic diseases such as uh, rheumatoid arthritis and many more which I will be explaining to you. Apart from uh, infections, even autoimmune diseases can cause scleritis. So, if it is anterior scleritis, usually it extends up to the ora serrata and if it is posterior scleritis, it can extend beyond the ora serrata. If it is pan scleritis, it can involve both anterior and posterior. Now, another important point that you need to remember is scleral inflammation can invariably spread in very severe patients to corneal involvement secondary to scleritis. So, that is called sclerokeratitis or you can also have Uveal tissue getting involved and inflamed secondary to scleritis when it is called scleroveitis. So, in the case of the former that is sclerokeratitis, it is quite common to see patients with very severe scleritis develop, uh, uh, develop peripheral ulcerative keratitis. So, the periphery of the cornea can get involved. So, the point to be noted in this slide is every patient who has scleritis, we have to examine the cornea and the uveal structures to look for a spillover of inflammation. Now, ocular examination is very important, but before ocular examination is performed with the slit lamp, slit lamp is the classical method of performing ocular examination, but before that, we need to do an examination in daylight. That is, you ask the patient to sit probably in front of you know a source of light which can even be near a window sunlight and that will give you a very good idea of the color of the eye and the change in the pattern of vascularity. So, episcleritis typically will appear salmon pink and scleritis will appear deep purple in color. The third feature to be looked for in patients before you embark on a slit lamp examination is you need to look for scleral thinning. Of course, scleral thinning is best visualized with slit lamp, but definitely a gross examination with diffuse light can also tell you if the sclera appears thin based on the visibility of the underlying choroid. So, whenever you do a slit lamp examination, you should do two things. You should do a diffuse illumination and you should use red free light. So, what do we have to look for? Essentially, first scleral edema. So, scleritis, the hallmark is scleral edema. So, how scleral edema means the, uh, there is a little bit of fluid accumulation which is causing a slight bulge in the scleral tissue which can be very easily picked up on putting a slit beam at the area of suspected edema. Then there can be congestion of deep scleral vessels which can cause a uh, circumcon congestion or as an opposite of the congestion, you can also have an avascular patch. Now, that is a very poor prognostic sign. As the term indicates, it is an avascular patch, which means that that area is devoid of blood vessels. And the last feature is corneal changes. So, commonly to differentiate between episcleritis and scleritis. So, when a patient comes to you, you can say that it is not glaucoma based on examination. You can say it is not conjunctivitis, it is not uveitis based on just your examination. But how do you actually distinguish between episcleritis and scleritis? That is a little more difficult. So, what we need to do here is you need to look for the presence of uh, blanching of conjunctival vessels. I already mentioned to you that there is extreme congestion in episcleritis and scleritis because of rich vascular plexus in the episclera. So, 
if you apply this phenyl ephrine drops that is 10 percent of phenyl ephrine you will have a classical constriction of both the conjunctival and superficial episcleral vessels so phenyl ephrine is a vasoconstrictor it, when used topically as an eye drop, it can cause constriction of conjunctival and superficial episcleral vessels, whereas the deep scleral plexus will remain unchanged and so you can make a diagnosis of scleritis. So, imagine your patient has a red eye and you are not able to identify whether it is episcleritis or scleritis. If you put 10 percent uh, phenylephrine drops and the conjunctival and uh, the congestion totally goes away, then it is episcleritis.